Thanks, Lindy, for sharing your garden with us. And now we're going to be talking about some standout plants that can really stand up to the heat. Uh, we're joined by Adam Diaz from uh, Plant Escape Nursery, and welcome back to Central Texas Gardener. Thank you, Tom. It's always great to have you on, and uh, Plant Escape down in South Austin, a unique kind of nursery where, I know, remember years ago when you started off, you, you were trying to blend art and the, the plant world. Are you still doing that down there? We are. We still have the art gallery and the organic garden center there on South First Street. Okay, that's great. And uh, uh, what's, what's new? What's happening down at Plant Escape? Well, um, we are still focusing on having local artists mm -hmm. and uh, having just regular shows, mm -hmm. art receptions, mm -hmm. and um, having our organic vegetables and herbs and native plants and yeah. drought tolerant organic products. Mm -hmm. That's great. And I know that you, one of the things that, uh, and I can see the results because we shared some of the images with me, uh, you've really gotten into the landscaping side of the business in a big way, and uh, I love what I see in your work. Well, thank you. Yeah, I started a landscape design company called Stone Crop Design, and um, we've been doing some really fun, interesting things. Yeah, you, real creative use of hardscape, and one of the things, I love this kind of landscape look for Austin. Uh, lots of uh, the limestone, lots of the granite, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. But when I, when I look at some of the images you show, um, it really seems like the plants have kind of a sculptural quality in the garden. Yeah, I'm always looking for something that has structure to it, mm -hmm. some uh, something that kind of pops out at you. Mm -hmm. um, just it's it's real fun look doing something like that, and on a minimal level too. Yeah, and uh, minimal plantings make a lot of sense, and and you know some people like the real exuberant gardens, mm -hmm. um, but I think that others, the other side of the aesthetic is equally valid and, and can be just as beautiful. And um, one of the things that I really like in your work is that you've created a lot of really cool raised planters and raised metal bowls and other kinds of things to really showcase some of these plants. Yeah, we uh, do a lot of steel work and uh, like using um, metal dishes and uh, metal containers, mm -hmm. I was using metal pipes, and mm -hmm. we just plant them up with the right plants and let them flow and pop out, and mm -hmm. they look great, as long as, you know, and they're low maintenance. Too. Right. Well, that's the thing. You've got to choose the right plants and those kinds of things, and uh, it's, you've done a great job with that, it looks like. And we're going to be talking about some of these plants that have <clears throat> a lot of different appeals. I mean, as you indicated, the, these are plants that are going to be tough. Mm -hmm. that are low maintenance. Um, usually that means xeric down here, meaning they, they can stand up to drought. Mm -hmm. But they also have that kind of quality that you like, which is that they really stand out and have that uh, kind of a sense of themselves, if you will. We're going to start by talking about uh, a dikeo that's called Red Devil. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 15 years ago, nobody knew what a dikeo was in Central Texas, but now you see them in gardens everywhere, and these are tough, hardy plants. Yeah, they're really tough. Um, this particular one has a really good color, and they multiply. They produce mm. little pups, and right. they flower. Very drought tolerant, look good in containers, in metal containers, or in the ground. Right. Well, I, th I, I love them. Um, they're, it's like an aloe or a sotolo, except more attractive, it has that lustrous quality mm -hmm. to the leaf, often kind of bright colors to the foliage as well. Um, but we also know why it gets the name Red Devil. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> uh, it's got some sharp spines along the edge there. You gotta wear gloves if you're working with these plants. Definitely, they're kind of mean. But it uh, takes all the basic care kind of requirements of the plants we've just met, referenced. Well-drained, mm -hmm. sun, you know, just a good plant. Mm -hmm. Right next to it is a plant I know absolutely nothing about, and you're real big on it's Calabanus? Calabanus hookeri. Calabanus hookeri, okay, yeah. so tell me more about this. Um, it is a <laughs> desert plant, mm -hmm. uh, it has a wonderful caudex, and mm -hmm. uh, that's just that's that. It's the kind of bulbous projection that the leaves are coming from. Yeah, and it has that ponytail type foliage, that grassy foliage, and it mm -hmm. just uh, does really great in containers. Um, I have had it in the ground too, and it's cold hardy. Yeah. Well, I love, you know, almost anything with that blue green color, I'm going to love. But mm -hmm. to add the blue green color to the form of this plant, and it's really striking. How, how big does it get? Um, it can get probably, as far as I've seen, two times, three times bigger mm -hmm. than that. Mm -hmm. The caudex, I've seen maybe a foot in diameter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, so a really showy kind of sculptural quality to the, on the base of the plant, and then, then that kind of uh, light and airy top, which mm -hmm. is a kind of a neat combination. Mm -hmm. So again, Calabanus hookeri, and, and it just uh, very appealing. And I could see that being in a container or a, a showy bed all by itself even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next to it, we have one of my all-time favorite plants, a sweet olive. And in one of the garden images you sh uh, that you share with us, you use this plant in what looks like a screening ca oh, capacity, right? Yeah, we uh, created this, these um, steel panels. And underneath the panels, we used a row of mm -hmm. the sweet olive. And it's an evergreen, mm -hmm. um, does well all year round, drought tolerant. Um, and it has a very fragrant flower. It smells wonderful. Uh, it's my, actually my favorite uh, fragrance in a southern garden, I think, is mm -hmm. the sweet olive. Uh, you typically most fragrant during the winter times when the weather cools down. Mm -hmm. February seems to be its month, uh, really. Uh, but uh, insignificant little flower. You have to hunt around to see what's blooming almost because you can't see it. Um, it's a very small little white flower. But uh, tough and surprisingly tough too uh, for our area. I often thought this had to be a plant of like New Orleans and that area. But there's some old specimens that around Austin that are just thriving and um, kind of benign ne neglect. Yeah, they, you don't have to do much to them. They're real drought tolerant. They do excellent in pots mm -hmm. and you can hedge <clears throat> them. Um, right. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, keeping one in a pot by the front door is a really good idea because of the fragrance. That's true. It gets trapped by the doors uh, or the enclosed space of the doorways. It's mm -hmm. really wonderful. Next to it is a, a candelia. And uh, you use this in some real creative ways in uh, some of the uh, gardens you use, uh, that you sh you, again, that you've shared with us. I love that one planter picture that you have with uh, just a, a very simple planting of just this plant. Uh, it really looks great that way. Yeah, it. Uh, we put it in a steel container and um, it drought tolerant. It's a cacti, mm -hmm. so doesn't need much. We'll take full sun. We'll take a little shade also. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I have it in a narrow kind of walkway, and it looks really cool. Kind of a neat modern look. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, you know, when the first time I saw the picture, I thought, oh, that's horsetail sedge. Mm -hmm. But this, but horsetail sedge is, uh, needs a lot of water and is very invasive. This, not so. Not so at all, yeah. Everybody, I, I, everybody is familiar with horse sedge. Mm -hmm. um, I tell them it's like that, but without needing all the water. Yeah, so candelia, and this is a plant that's native to West Texas and the and deserts in Mexico, so should do pretty well here in Central Texas it, as well. It does. Uh, we, you love the succulents, and you use them in all different kinds of ways in the garden, in your steel planters and in the ground. Tell me about this one. I really like the color. Um, this one is sedum machinoid, and this one grows in the mountains in Japan, mm -hmm. and it's really, really tough. Um, cold hardy, <clears throat> drought tolerant. Uh, I've even seen it take some, a decent amount of shade, mm -hmm. and uh, has that really vibrant green-yellow color. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's sedum machinoid. And I would assume, like all the sedums, that this is another plant that uh, prefers on the dry side. Correct. And uh, I would love to see this in some blue containers. I'm spilling over the edge of a blue pot. I think that color would really pop. Yeah, cobalt blue and that color just, mm. yeah, really pop. Yeah. Well, uh, you use a lot of really cool succulents, but I, I like, I like the, the color in this one especially. Right next to that, we have a form of bamboo that you've used also in, in the garden images that you've shared. And this one is called fern leaf bamboo. And this is actually, I don't know much about this particular variety. Fern leaf um, does really well in our area. It's one of the ones that I have, I, I've seemed to like the best and does well in our winter time. Mm -hmm. um, can get about 15 up to 19 feet, depending on the area. We'll take some shade, not a dense, dense shade, but w compared to most bamboos, we'll take some good shade at, or full sun and uh, works as a great screening. Mm -hmm. It's not a running bamboo. It's a clumping bamboo. Which is great. Yeah. Well, that's what you want in a bamboo, really. It's that's right. something that you can control. And so for a plant that gives you that uh, the kind of loose and shaggy counterpoint to a kind of a formal and, and again, urbane kind of landscape that you're creating, 
This is a this is a nice choice, really. You mm -hmm. get the, that nice shaggy top, but then you also get the canes, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love all the bamboos, but that one looks like a real keeper. Now, again, succulents are a theme that you like, and just real briefly, we want to mention this one. This is uh, one of the pencil cacti. Yeah, it's a fire stick pencil cactus, mm -hmm. and um, with more sun, it gets kind of a reddish tinge to it. Okay. And also with the cooler temperatures, you can see it get a red tinge to it. Yeah. And cold hardy, or is this one you need to protect? You do need to protect this one. It's yeah, a little, that's little what tender. I okay. So best in a pot. Okay. So fire stick pencil cactus, love the form, kind of like the candelier in a sense. Adam, real briefly, where, tell folks how they can find you again. We are at 3507 South First Street, um, three blocks north of Ben White, corner of Alpine and South First. Okay. Could also find us on the web at plantescapegardens.com. Okay, plantescapegardens.com. And also Stone Crop Landscaping. Stonecropdesign.com. Okay, very good. Well, yeah. Adam, thanks so much for being up on Central Texas Gardener Game. Good luck to you. Thank you, Tom. All right, and coming up next, it's our friend Daphne.